Okay, in this video I want to take a moment to address uh, some common misconceptions with uh, hard drives um, and that is in regard to putting them in the freezer. We are going to start with a sealed drive. This uh, label has not been punctured. It's not been opened in any way, shape, or form. And I want to just use this as kind of a demonstration of why it's a bad idea to put hard drives in the freezer. Um, this is kind of a myth that was propagated from the early 90s back when uh, on occasion you would have situations where putting a hard drive in the freezer would actually make a difference and mainly it had to do with the electronics in the drives, um, the way that the um, drives would sometimes become out of alignment as far as reading tracks. Uh, anything that changed the overall dimensions inside the drive, even minutely, could sometimes make a difference um, with it. Uh, newer drives, it has no effect. Um, even still, you still get people that say, oh, I put my hard drive in the freezer and, you know, oh, it fired right up afterwards. Most of the time, if you have an issue where hard drive doesn't work or it's working slowly or even sometimes when it's clicking because it can't read the servo tracks properly, um, that usually will have something to do with the electronics if the freezer method works for a situation like that. Sometimes you can have chips on the back of these boards that start to get hot and it makes it to where either the drive does not spin at the proper RPM that it needs to um, or it starts to overload um, other elements within the drive and then you get to where the drive can't read properly. Because um, in some cases we've had issues where uh, if we couldn't swap the board out for whatever reason we could actually go through and freeze some of the components on the drive, or on the board, I'm sorry, and actually get it to where the drive was at least somewhat readable. Sometimes we could actually keep really, really cold air blowing on the back of the drive, and it would help um, in an, go through and read in a situation where it normally wouldn't. So most of the time, if the freezer works, it's because this board is bad. Um, drives these days have a number of uh, firmware elements with inside them that compensate for uh, changes in temperature, uh, even altitude. So uh, going through and putting the drive in the freezer, you know, there's extremes on each end for hard drives as far as what they can withstand temperature-wise, uh, both too cold and too hot. Uh, but drives themselves typically can adjust, make adjustments internally uh, however slight they might be uh, to compensate for uh, things like varying temperature, uh, even altitude. So um, the other misconception with hard drives is that they are airtight, hermetically sealed is a term that you've seen thrown out there a lot. Um, nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, most hard drives need to have airflow in order to allow the drive to function normally inside. In fact, a lot of drives you'll see holes here on the case, on the case cover uh, that specifically say do not cover um, because they are air, air intakes for the drive. The drive will take air in as it normally functions and the platters are spinning inside here and that air is then used as kind of a cushion. Uh, they call it an air bearing inside there which allows the heads just to lift and barely float uh, above the platter surface. So when you have a, um, a drive that is functioning normally, it is pulling air into it in some form or fashion. Not every single drive has that, but a lot of them do. So uh, not all drives are airtight. And so what happens is when you put the drive in the freezer, you're still allowing it to build up moisture content inside the drive, um, and you allow it to go through and develop ice crystals on the platter surface itself. The platter is actually where your data is stored, and the heads only float just a few nanometers above that platter surface. Any imperfections, any dust contamination, anything like that on that platter uh, will impact the heads and normally it will damage the heads if you're lucky that's all it does but most of the time it will actually create scratches on the platter surface that then prevent the data from being recoverable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this drive. I've got couple of anesthetic bags. I've got a Ziploc bag and some bubble wrap. 
and we're gonna take this drive and we're gonna wrap it up probably more than what most people normally would and I'm gonna set my timer on my phone for four hours and we're gonna pull the drive out and we're gonna see uh, what it looks like inside and kind of demonstrate to you the adverse effects of putting the drive in the freezer so starting first I'm actually gonna double bag this I'm gonna kind of go above and beyond what I think the average person might do. You hear this a lot from computer repair companies and stuff like that and that aren't familiar with hard drives themselves to the extent that they're not aware that you know, putting the drives in the freezer can be detrimental. It's just something that they've heard that other people have done in the past and that supposedly worked. So it's some time to pass down to people or maybe just an initiative that a lot of companies take and say, hey, you know, your drive's not working, we'll throw it in the freezer. And, you know, it'll be fine after that. Well, it's really one of the, it's not only a bad thing to do, it's really a horrible thing to do. One of the worst things you can actually do. I'll we'll take this and we'll squeeze as much of the air out as possible. I don't want there to be any thinking that we're trying to somehow rig this around to to fail. I want to do it just like a normal computer repair company might do, or anybody for that matter. And this isn't a knock against any of them, it's just, you know, it's a level of misinformation that keeps getting passed down. So we have the drive packaged up. And that's how it'll go in the freezer. I'm actually going to take my phone and I'm going to set my timer for four hours. It is 11.52 a.m. Set my timer for four hours. Good to go there. Take this drive and I'm gonna put it in this little freezer here in our back office. It's going to sit there for four hours, and then we will be back. Okay, here we are four hours later. Actually, it's a little over four hours. My phone. Um, 4.45, so we're actually almost five hours over. Because we started this at 11.52 this morning. My alarm went off, and I was up at the front, and we've been slammed busy today, so I couldn't get right back here when I was going to do it. So now we're towards the end of the day. And a little bit more time available. It spent almost five hours in the freezer. And again, we have this wrapped in the uh, bubble wrap in a, in a Ziploc bag, and we had it in two anti static bags. So, I'm going to go ahead here and open this up quickly. Now there's a couple of issues that come to play with drives that have been in the freezer. Um, first of all being the um, ice crystals that start to form on the platter. That's a death sentence for the data right there for sure. Um, but even if you were to allow it to thaw a little bit even or if it didn't get quite cold, you still have condensation buildup on the platter which is also no good this up a little bit and again this drive is useless it's not any customer drive or anything like that so just an old parts drive that we had here so I'm not being extra careful with anything on it some of these the seal really sticks on them and you would never want probably open just being careless like that with a real drive so okay so after five hours it's pretty obvious and you can see there's already some crystallization on the platter itself and actually you can see barely you may not be able to see it but I can see it through here um, the slight rings were uh, water is condensed and frozen 
here on the platter surface itself. Um, that's actually some scored area of the drive that probably prevented it from being unrecoverable when we initially tried. Um, but this all right here is all frozen areas. It's just microscopic ice crystals that formed in there. And again, this was a sealed drive. Um, this was a drive that had never been opened and we had put it in as much preventative wrapping as we could to keep uh, any moisture out of the drive, but it doesn't matter. As soon as you have it to where the drive starts being exposed to warmer air, everything's going to start condensing and the, and the surface is so cold. Uh, what condenses is obviously going to freeze. Um, I'm going to move the head out here a little bit. Again, this is not a usable drive, so it doesn't really matter, but you can actually see pretty vividly the groove that that cut into the ice itself. So you can see as you go along there, there is absolutely no doubt that that would kill your data without a shadow of a doubt. So putting a hard drive in the freezer, no good. And this is just what it's like when it first comes out here shortly. Uh, as it sets out a little bit longer, it's actually going to start um, to melt in here and the whole inside is just going to be covered with water droplets, which is just as bad. So again, don't put your hard drive in the freezer. Um, regardless of what you see on the internet, you know, post it on message boards and people what they suggest and if your computer technician says, hey, I'm going to throw this in the freezer or hey, I already did, well, definitely don't power it up again, but you know, whatever you can do, you know, just tell them to stop. Don't do that. Um, we aren't doing this as a promotion to have you send our, your drive to us. So this is just a means of informing uh, people what the you know the potential problems are by doing this because we've seen so many people lose data this way. So anyway, uh, for more information about our services, though, um, you can visit our website at acsdata.com. Uh, we recover data from every brand hard drive, every type of hard drive, uh, every possible. Uh, configuration of RAID arrays, um, doesn't matter how complex they are. Uh, this is all we've been doing for over 10 years now. Uh, we back all of our recovery work by strict uh, no data, no charge guarantee. The only time we ever charge any attempt fees is if a hard drive's already been opened. So, um, and on some large, extra large RAID arrays, we charge uh, some small attempt fees as well for them. But, um, you know, for every for any drive that's been sent in hasn't been opened, nobody's really messed with it. Um, definitely, if the data can't be recovered, we don't charge you for it, and there's no evaluation fees ever for anything, even if they have been opened. So, um, again, website's at acsdata.com. Uh, you can always check there for more information. You can give us a call one eight hundred seven one seven eight nine seven four if you have any other questions. Uh, you can message us if you want to see any other videos, but you know we just wanted to illustrate the importance of not doing this and why it's important not to do it. We hope it's helped you out, and uh, look for some more videos soon. Thanks for watching.